Hello and welcome back. This is Jonathan Gardner covering Sergey Ling's Basic Mathematics. And this is section 13.5. Uh, we have been running through different functions. We talked about the exponent function last time. We talked about polynomials previously. In this section, we're going to talk about logarithms. And logarithms are pretty scary. Uh, they really shouldn't be, okay? I know there's been many videos made on the internet about logarithms. Um, my video isn't going to be much better than any of theirs. However, we are going to be thorough, and we're going to cover some rules of logarithms and how they work, okay? So let's suppose that we had a number a that's greater than 1. Okay, and we said, let's suppose a, y is defined to be a to the x. So we have the exponent function there, right? So x is the log, logarithm, of y to the base of a. And we write x is equal to log base a of y, which in this case log base a of a to the x, okay? So this is the way we use logarithms to get to that exponent part if we wanted to find out what number that is, okay? So as an example, he has a couple examples here. They're fairly straightforward. We know that 8 is the same as 2 times 2 times 2, or 2 to the 3, right? So we see that 3 is equal to the log base 2 of 8, right? log base 2 of 2 to the 3, okay? When I'm looking at logs, what I see is I look at this number here, and then I look at this number here. And if it's log base 2 of something raised to the power of, these things, they just cancel, and you're left with that 3 down below, okay? That's basically how it works. Let's do another example. In this case, we have 27. That's equal to 3 to the 3rd, right? So suppose we wanted to take the log base 3, base 3 of 27. Well, that's 3 to the third, so we're taking the exponent part, so that's going to give us 3. That's the answer for there. Because 3 raised to the third power is 27. Okay? All right. Now, a couple more rules about logs. Okay? As long as y is greater than 0, there is a log of that. Um, there is a number, let's do it this way. There exists a number a to the power of x is equal to y. Uh, a to the x is equal to y, and so we can have log base a of y is equal to x. There's a solution to this formula, right? Now, let's get into some rules for logs. Log, number, log rule number one says if we have log base a, any base, of x times y, okay, that is going to be the same as log of base a to the x of plus log base a of y, okay? Uh, we are going to prove that in a second, but we're going to look at log number two. The rule log two says that log base a of one is equal to zero, okay? That should be fairly evident why that is. And finally, we're going to have log three. And log number three says if x is less than y, then log base a of x is less than log to the same base a of y. So logs get smaller as the thing you're taking the log of gets smaller. Okay, so let's prove log 1. Okay, so we're going to prove... Okay, in order to prove log 1, we're going to have two numbers. We're going to have x is equal to a to the u, and y is equal to a to the v, okay? And so u is equal to log base a of x, and v is equal to log base a of y, okay? So when we take the log base a of x, y, that's the same as log to the base a of a to the u times a to the v, which is the same as log to the base a of a to the u plus v, right? And so this gives us u plus v, okay? What's u? u is the log base a of x, and v is the log base a of y. So this is equal to log base a of x plus log base a of y. That's basically the proof there. Pretty straightforward stuff, okay? If we wanted to prove log 2, basically requires only one step, 
okay? We say zero is equal to log base a of one, while a raised to the zero is equal to one. So that's pretty straightforward to prove that. And then the proof of log three, So what we'll do here is we'll say u equals log base a of x and v equals log base a of y, okay? We have a to the u is equal to x and a to the v is equal to y. And because of exp4 from the previous section, we know that when the uh, numbers, if this u is smaller than that v, then x must be smaller than y, okay? It is fairly easy to draw a graph of the log. Um, I, he says leave it as an exercise to the reader, but, but it's so easy, I just wanna do it right now. So let's go ahead and just draw what that's gonna look like. So we're gonna take the log, let's say base 10, okay? And so we're gonna say y is equal to log base 10 of x. Okay, so at x equals zero, it's undefined. We don't have any definition for it, so it's undefined. But we know that it's zero at one. Okay, we're gonna do two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then it's gonna be two, wait, ten is gonna be one, right? So one, because ten to the one is one, and then one hundred will be two, right? And then if we take one tenth, then it's gonna be negative one, okay? And so it's basically gonna go yoink, it's gonna pass through there, and it's gonna fairly rapidly go down and be asymptotic with the coordinate system. Okay, you can try different, different bases and see what you get. You can go online, you can graph that with Wolfram Alpha Alpha as well. They'll show you some various graphs. Uh, we can use logs to solve equations, to solve problems, okay? Suppose that we had uh, f of t is equal to 10 times two to the kt, okay? k is a constant, suppose that f of 1 half is equal to 3, we want to find k, right? So we know that 3 is equal to 10 times 2 to the k over 2, right? What do we do about this? Well, we take the log 2 on both sides, so we get log base 2 of 3 equals log base 2 of 10 times 2 to the k over 2 which is the same as log base two of 10 plus log base two of two to the k over two, okay? And so we get log base two of 10 plus, well, log base two of two to the power of something is just that thing, k over two, right? And so now we can have k over two is equal to log base two of three minus log base two of 10. So k is equal to two, times log base two of three minus 10. So that would be three divided by 10, okay? So K is equal to log of three tenths, log base two of three tenths, okay? Uh, this is actually something that we do quite often when we're doing exponential functions. Uh, even in physics, we do this a lot. And what, what's interesting is it kind of doesn't matter what you choose as the base, the constant, the K will be will adopt to whatever you're using. Let's do a radioactive substance in this problem. This guy is disintegrating. Let's use a nice uh, green color here. So we have the radioactive substance R of T is equal to capital C times three to the minus five T, okay? And C is not equal to zero, of course. At what time will there be exactly one third? So one third at t equals what? Okay, so we're gonna set one third of c is equal to c times three to the minus five t, right? We wanna solve for t, okay? And at this point, what we can do is we can take the log base three of both sides, but I'm gonna do some manipulation. I'm gonna divide both sides by three, and so we get one third equals three to the minus five t. And you note this constant now drop, drops out. We don't need to refer that to, to that anymore. So we take log base three of both sides equals log base three of three to the minus five t. Sorry about my handwriting. 
So what's log base 3 of 1 third? Well, 1 third is the same as 3 to the minus 1. So this is minus 1 is equal to minus 5t. So t is equal to 1 fifth. Okay? So after 1 fifth of these cycles, we're going to get 1 third. Okay? There are a lot of exercises here. One thing that I want to call out is he introduces the natural log. Uh, he calls it just log without a base. But in, in our, so he, what he calls log, so he says log is the same as log base e, right? But I am used to using ln. I write it in cursive like that, ln. Okay, that's a natural log. He doesn't explain what e is. To be honest, it doesn't matter until you get to calculus. Um, but it is interesting. It is useful. Okay, and there are quite a few problems here and they are not simple uh, Especially if you're not used to the log um, Let's go through them really quickly here because I do think it's important to do these. Okay first problem sketch a graph, right? So what does it mean to sketch a graph draw a table and just put points on there if you want to pull out a calculator If you really really want to after you've done it manually load up Wolfram Alpha or some program and actually graph these out Okay so plug in the different values um, and see what you get. Okay, uh, log base two of 64. Remember that 64, what's 64? Well, that's four times 16. So that's two to the two times two to the four. So that's two to the six, okay? So again, if you knew your powers of six, two, you'd know that. Uh, 27 is three to the third. 25 is five squared. And 64 is, yeah, 2 to the 6, we've already done that. 81 is actually 81 is 9 times 9, which is the same as 3 to the 4th power. Okay. Um, remember, if it's, if it's 1 over 3 to the 4th, that's the same as 3 to the minus 4. Okay. All right. And we now have number 3. And uh, in number three, he uses this root. He wants you to prove that log of a to the x is equal to x log a, okay? And the way that he wants you to do this, the what you can do is raise, so just like we have log base two of two to the n is equal to n, right? Well, two raised to the log base two of n is also equal to n, okay? And um, how do you prove that? That's something you got to figure out how to prove. Okay, um, so play around with that. The next couple. So once we know that we have the rule log of some number to the x is equal to x log of a, then all you need to know now is what log of two is. In this case, it gave you 0 0.6 for log of two. And so these should be fairly easy to solve. If you're having problems on number three, um, then let me know in the comments below that you're having problems with it. A lot of problems to do with exponential decay. Um, I gave a couple examples here how to do solve those. I don't want to go too deep into that. And that's pretty much all there is. Well, I guess that, that's a wrap for sec chapter 13. The next chapter is mapping. So guys, if you have any questions, please ask below. This is an important topic. It does enter into a lot of discussions and it is really important for your physics education. Hey guys, take care and bye-bye. Thank you for watching this video on Sergey Lang's Basic Mathematics. You can find the series on the left, and on the right, you can click to support my channel. Thank you very much. Bye bye.